Welcome to the PCO tutorial. Here we'll dive into a quick step-by-step -step process for managing potential change orders on your project. Let's do a quick overview. A potential change order is any issue on your project which may result in a change order. This could be caused by a change in the design, added work requested by your client, unforeseen conditions found on site, or even scope gaps or double ups within your own subcontractors. Whatever the cause of the issue, this potential change order is what you will use to track it. Even if an issue does not result in a change order, the PCO system is still used to track the issue and keep it in a central location for easy reference. This process is crucial for managing and controlling every potential change on your project. By following this process, you'll have a clean and organized system that allows you to track all changes, protecting you from losing time and money. It will also give your client more confidence in your team's ability to handle changes. So let's look at how the PCO system is set up. Let's open the PCO folder. The PCO folder contains separate folders according to each PCO number. You may create as many of these folders as you need on your project. The PCO folder also contains a PCO workbook. This workbook will allow you to track every potential change order on your project. The first tab is a contractor PCO log. This log is used to track every PCO that you open on your project. You will enter the information for each PCO that you open and track individual costs related to each PCO, including internal company costs and owner costs. This is the log that you use to work through the small details of every change on your project. The second tab is the owner PCO log. This log is used to track all owner related PCOs. This log contains an overview of your owner contract and helps you track each owner PCO in summary format so that you can track the overall status of owner PCOs on the project and also provide this summary to your client for review. This log is the client facing log that gives overall picture of PCOs that are being presented to your client for approval. The third tab is a subcontractor change order log. This log will be used to track the change orders you're issuing to each subcontractor. This log allows you to see the subcontractor total contract values, plus their approved change orders, dates of execution, and updated contract amount. Let's talk about the process. When you encounter any issue on the project that may result in a change order, you will create a new potential change order, or PCO. Open the PCO log and use the next available PCO number. Then enter the category, reference number, description, contractor name, status, and then any preliminary or actual cost estimates that you have for this PCO. The category may be something like an owner request, design discrepancy, scope gap or double up, back charge, or scope coordination. The reference number could be an RFI number, bulletin number, ASI, or something similar. The contractor is any contractor associated with the change. Many PCOs will have multiple contractors associated with them. When this is the case, just create multiple rows for a single PCO number. When you have your own company cost, like overhead and profit markup, or self-performed work that you as a contractor are performing, you may create a line for your company as well. This way you can see your own costs associated with each PCO along with your subcontractor costs. The status is typically set to open, closed, on hold, or committed. Committed means that the change order has been issued. The internal cost section of the log is where you'll track the costs received by your subcontractors and any other costs your company incurs related to the PCO. Enter the cost information once you receive it, updating as you go through the PCO process. The cost to owner section is where you will track the owner change order request number and the owner change order number issued for this PCO. Remember, your contractor PCO log should contain all the PCOs on your project. That means internal PCOs and owner PCOs. Any PCO that will be presented to the owner will be simply copied from the contractor PCO log to the owner PCO log in summary format. You should not place any PCOs on the owner log that you do not want to present to the owner. The owner PCO log is used as a high-level tracking tool to help track PCOs which you will be presenting to the owner, while the contractor log is a tool that allows you to track individual parts of each PCO you have. 
Once you've created the PCO in your log, you can create the corresponding PCO folder. Your PCO folder should be the same number as you created in your log. This folder is where you will save any items related to that PCO. This would include emails, documents, plans, requests for information, pricing, and any other items related to that PCO. Now, as you work through any PCO created on your project, you can use this PCO number as a reference in your emails and communication regarding the issue. Now with all your backup, pricing, and correspondence saved in your PCO folder, you're ready to prepare a change order. Watch the next video below and see how you can prepare and create change order requests in minutes. With the use of this PCO system, this process is easy and effective for getting change orders issued and approved. Just by having this system in place, one company was able to recover over $350,000 worth of change orders that were previously missing. Simply by having an effective PCO and change order management system, they were able to compile their requests, track all costs for their clients, and submit clean, professional change order packages that ultimately were approved and paid. Let's look at how you can create the same system for your team right now.